Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're gonna be doing an opinion video and this time it's about the Reflex Camera Kickstarter. It is so far a failed Kickstarter campaign and I say so far because I've talked to the funder, uh, Lawrence, and basically he's explained to me a few things, which I won't mention all on the video because we had a chat that was not supposed to be disclosed, so I'll keep that as is. But I do have some opinions about how the project uh, happened, how it could have happened. Uh, of course, there's subtleties to the market then and the market now, and my ideas for what I would think would be maybe a more feasible product nowadays. So. Quick refresher, uh, Reflex Camera was a project that was launched on Kickstarter uh, years ago, I think 2016 or 17, and it was asking for 100,000 pounds UK. And uh, it reached 131,000 pounds, and it promised a Reflex Camera, so with a mirror, that had interchangeable lens mounts, the whole lens mount would come off, and interchangeable backs. And it had a built-in, I think, flash, and it also had a Bluetooth uh, connectivity to your phone for some other stuff that I'm not remembering right now. So the campaign came, they were successful, they went ahead and started production. They ran into some issues with uh, finding shutters and then like manufacturing certain parts in small volumes. Of course, a new reflex camera with 131,000 uh, pounds. I think the quantities were 500, maybe to 1,000 cameras. As you know, the more parts you make, the easier it is to fund. And making, you know, if you're making 10,000, it's much easier than you're doing 1,000 plus prototyping and so on. They moved to China, Shenzhen, where you basically can get prototypes done for way cheaper and way faster than in the UK where they started. And they kept on going. After years, I met them at Photokina 2018. They had a prototype lens. They even had a prototype camera that I couldn't get, really get to see, but you know, they had it. It was working and they continued, continued, continued till basically uh, a couple months ago, they announced that they were, they had hit basically a bump and they were probably gonna put the project aside, freeze it for now. Doesn't mean it's done, but a lot of people backed it and haven't gotten anything in return. They run out of funds, so on, so on. You know the story with Kickstarters. So. I want to first go over to where the scene was when they started. Pentax K1000, like the one I have in my hand, were 40 bucks with a lens. You could buy them anywhere, shoot, uh, it wasn't a problem. But uh, film cameras were getting discontinued back and forth. Nikon lost their FM10, which was their student camera that all the universities, colleges, and so on that had photography programs recommended. Uh, they had been the Nikon F6 was basically, everybody knew it wasn't made anymore, they're still selling it. Canon 1V, which is professional models, were also discontinued or on the way to being discontinued. And yes, there was Leica cameras, but that's about it. There was Lomography cameras, there were some medium format cameras, uh, you know, mostly Lomography style. And then there was the, you know, reflex cameras that were getting uh, killed. And Lawrence found an opportunity to do something that was different. He was aiming to something different. And to me, that is the basically problem of this whole project is something different. We've had years and decades of photography. We've had decades of development on uh, SLRs, rangefinders, and so on in cameras. And he was trying to do something that was reinventing the wheel. And to me, that is amazing. And I'm so proud of their project. And uh, that was also the flaw of the project. I feel like they should have gone for something simpler. And I'll explain. If you were going to make a camera, a camera without bells and whistles is easier to make. And I say easier, still not easy in any way, don't get me wrong, this is a really big project. But it's easier to make something with a fixed uh, focal plane uh, for the lens or flange distance, sorry. Fixed back, just like a hot shoe, few speeds and focusing. That's all you need. Current lens is already available, so you could make something with uh, some, you know, middle point. So let me explain. I would have suggested making an SLR like the K1000 with a max shutter speed of 1 1000. And yes, it would have been great to have 1 2000 or 1 4000. But honestly, like a camera still sell new, only have a max shutter speed of 1 1000, at least the film ones, not sure about the digital ones. And nobody has a big problem with that. It's fine for most applications, especially users, normal users, uh, amateurs like me and so on. So that is what I would have done. Then I would have had a fixed uh, flange mount or like lens mount 
but I would have gone for something with a short flange mount. So what does that mean? It means that it would have been uh, shorter on the cone of the camera, which would have made it easier to adapt with adapters, which are currently sold pretty much for all mirrorless cameras, to uh, that mount. So I would have gone, for example, for a Canon EF, which is 44 millimeters uh, flange mount, and you could adapt uh, um, Olympus OM, Pentax K, M42, so on, lenses that there's hundreds and hundreds of different mounts, I mean lenses for that mount. And the back I would have kept it normal, just one roll of film, can be 36 exposures, 24 exposures, you know, hand bulked film and so on. And then hot shoe, because who doesn't want to shoot with a flash every now and then, with whatever sync you could get at the factory. That's what I would have uh, done. Honestly, I think by them trying to approach such a big project with the lens mount, a different lens mounts, which you need to have different, which ones do you want to do? You want to do OM, you want to do Pentax K, you want to do EM, then the back, which has to have baffles so you can like change the film or change the backs and so on, is a very big project. I do think that Lawrence uh, could have started with a basic model like the reflex camera basic and then from there they would have sold a couple hundred here and there universities and schools would have probably pre-ordered hundreds sometimes or maybe more stores like b and h adorama freestyle would have probably put a lot of money down to have stocks of 10 you know 10 20 30 50 100 cameras of these uh, new film camera and they would have started with that and then they could have developed like the reflex model 2 and then interchangeable lens mounts the whole thing blows your mind. Reflex version 3 interchangeable backs and blows your mind and that would have been great. And also another problem they had and I think they had and I'm telling you this was back in 2016-17 and the market was very different. The price point of the camera was supposed to be around 300 to 400 euros or pounds you know approximately there. That was a price that back then was high but nowadays with the film market where a K1000 is over $200 because everybody's recommended as the best beginner camera, this has gone from 50, which is what it was when they launched, to 200, 250, 300, depending on where you buy it with a lens. This is a 1.4, it's a little higher, but the 1.7 and so on, 1.8s are fine. So I think they should have aimed for a little higher budget. So a 500, 600, 700 euro camera, kit, <clears throat> maybe even without the lens, and I also know that they had developed a lens, that they had had little knickknacks there they were going to add to the eco you know, uh, system of Reflex, which would have been great as little budgets to have to grow to this final product. I do know that the goal that Lawrence had and the team was to make this big you know, product that was amazing, that you know, did all these things. But I feel like that is what made it a little harder for some people to buy in and so on. Also, the market at the time with cheap cameras didn't understand the need for new cameras. And that's what we also have to understand is the need of new film cameras is really important in the next maybe decade or two decades is gonna be the cameras are no longer made. Students, universities and so on can't usually buy, sometimes can't buy secondhand items so they would buy new. So they're taking away the photography program. Some are bringing it back nowadays, but you know what I mean. It's something that we really need is a cheap, you know, SLR camera. And I say this from the deepest respect. I think what Lawrence has done is, you know, amazing. I always have taken my hat off virtually and literally in front of him of what he's done. I do know the Kickstarter campaign hasn't gone all the way through and a lot of people have lost some of their money. That's the risk of Kickstarter and I'm sad for those people too. But I think that like what they have done is amazing. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that I know this and this is how it should have been. 2016, Nico didn't really know what he knows nowadays. Same thing goes with them, they probably would do things very differently nowadays. So I do hope, and I really do hope that someone takes either the Reflex uh, Kickstarter campaign or the legacy they have or the know-how with Lawrence or without Lawrence, uh, hopefully with Lawrence, and take it forward to where it could go because they've done a lot of development but I do think that they try to do too much in the whole reinventing the wheel with an SLR camera and they should have maybe made a compromise of making a K1000 or you know Nikon FM camera or something like that at a price point that would have been higher. Nobody would have known that these cameras would be so expensive nowadays 
and that film would be coming back. And yes, maybe it is because they were so cheap a couple years ago that there's so many people interested in film today. But I think that we are going to be needing these projects to hopefully go to the next step and build cameras again. So it's not to ditch on Reflex Camera. Like I said, I'm very, very proud of having talked to Lawrence in person, virtually, and have helped every time I could, which is not a lot because I'm not an expert on cameras in that sense. But I hope that this helps them. Maybe if someone is planning on doing a Kickstarter campaign, making a new camera or so on, I think there's a lot of space for new products in the film realm that are not uh, disposable, reusable cameras, which I think is the first step of coming back to film photography. And I'll make a whole video on what I think about that. But yeah, I just wanted to express my opinion and my respect for the project what I think could work nowadays and maybe could still work in the future and how I would do it if I could do it. I don't have enough brain power to make a film camera like this, but if somebody does, I think there is space for a K1000. If somebody made a new K1000 for five, 600 euros today in 2021, 2022, I would absolutely buy it just to show support, probably would buy two, give one away to some friends or here on YouTube. But yeah, that's basically my opinion on this topic. I know this is a little polarizing. The project, people lost money and that's upsetting. They have all the right to be upset. I don't think there was any misdone or do's in the project. I have talked to Lawrence and I think they did everything they could have come through. Uh, but I'm sad to see it not going forward and I hope it does in the future. So fingers crossed that the Reflex project is not done and that we will see new cameras that bring features that we want and need in the film community. So yeah, that's my opinion. As always, remember you can leave your comment. I love seeing the comments. I don't always answer, but I read almost every single comment, even though it can go crazy. Uh, thank you for watching guys and see you in the next one. Bye.